Okay, so uh, we had a little tech issue, a little drop out there, but uh, um, I wanted to say at this point in time that we are going to dedicate this show to this producer friend of yours, Simon Illa. So let's go ahead and bring Lars and uh, Julio back up. And um, you were thinking of actually uh, uh, trying trying to sing a song that he he wrote or helped produce. Um, I, I wrote it. It's called Tomorrow's Fun. I've been playing it a lot on Kimono My House. Okay. Every, I mean, wherever we go with our shows. But uh, uh -huh. what he did was um, we were doing, um, I was doing the backing vocals to it one afternoon. And it's like a three-part harmony thing, and I wasn't getting it. <laughs> and uh, Simon took his time on his own dime, and he came over to my you know our booth you know he stepped away from his uh you know rich or wealthy clients for uh, for half a day and he helped me he basically produced a vocal track to that song and uh mm -hmm. it's just a song i mean i haven't really it's funny when somebody passes that's when you tend to remember some of those things that was the first time that i first thing that came to mind uh, how much how, how free he was with his time when um when he clearly didn't need to be, you know, and uh, yeah, so so blessings to him. Super, you know, <clears throat> what a talent. Okay, yeah. um, and I understand that your your throat's not not so great now. So I barely um, got a voice, but yeah, but, but so you don't have should, to say. I'm just gonna kind of croak. I'm gonna Christopherson through it just because it's okay. just fitting. It's fitting for him, and uh, that's up to you. And. Uh, Julio, if you want to, you can you can sing backups over there. Will that come out in the mix? Oh, you know what happens when we try to get people singing together? They just never sync up. You know, there's always <laughs> a delay somewhere. I'm going to sing. It would be low like damn uh, Chris Dawkinson. Long time ago. Here we go. Okay. Am, am I rolling, buddy? You are. A long time ago when we first hit the streets Much has been learned, much has been beat so Full of commitment, so full of ideas Loaded with laughter and truckloads of beer No one could take this away from us now Spent way too much time with our backs to the wall And I will be fine you will too tomorrow will be fine la 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 <coughs> people still hustling and we're still the same just getting older no one to blame some friends are gone some slipped away Price is still high and it's gotta be paid. No one could take this away from us now. Spent way too much time with our backs to the wall. And I will be fine. You will too. Tomorrow will be fine. La 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 la. These days are better, these days are great Staring at 50 and don't need a fake So pick up your guitar, write you a song I'm surely glad you came along No one could take this away from us now Way too much time in rock and roll bands And I will be fine well, too, tomorrow will be fine. La 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 la. 
the show you're gonna have to go back and look at the at the comments while you're playing there because it's all good i mean it's all oh this is awesome diane marie said it's it's the johnny cash version <laughs> super badass tell uh tell uh, diane, tell, tell we'll diane be mr hank if i uh this time around cheers you will be too <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it didn't sound like that though it sounded badass <laughs> sound like chris christopherson just waking up man Tom Waits would have been proud. <laughs> or he will be May proud. I, uh, listen, uh, Happy New Year, Rory. Happy New Year. Yeah, it's something we haven't said yet, ha ha is there? Uh, why, why did I just say that? Anyway, <laughs> that's something that none of us have said yet on this show. It's the first show of the year. Um, so happy 2022, everyone who's watching. Uh, again, uh, one of the things I'm hoping that we get, get through on this show is it's going to be a better year. I know it. I know yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. For everybody. You know, I mean, here's the table, buddy. Not, knock on wood that we're going to push out this last strain. It's going to mutate itself down to, bull, to the bullshit that it is. And then we can move on and, you know, take on the world Most again. definitely. Most definitely. Um, Julio, are you still there? Yep. He just jumped He's into a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Lars has done a song, so we need equal time. Not here. today. <laughs> Are you ready to? Not today. You're not ready to jump on the toilet for us. <laughs> Only on Friday, Julio. <laughs> but are you ready to do a song for us? Sure. Yeah. We would love that. We need song and music right now. Okay. Um, oh, you I 
I see you as you showed me the ditch, and it hurt. I now can say I understand. I have lived as a loony, drunken man. I don't deserve another chance. It's the lifetime to think upon. I still see you till you're gone. I still hear you till you're gone. I ain't asking for a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where I don't belong. I can see where you're gone. Yeah, I can see where you're gone. Uh, I I noticed during one of your sets, I, I went by, was I was doing research to talk to you, uh, I went by and, and looked at your December sets that you did, and in one, uh, at the end of a song, you did a little um, laugh in. <laughs> 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 there you go. Uh, so, uh, can you tell us about uh, Phone Booth Records? Um... Well, I, uh, I kind of wanted to just record myself, mm -hmm. so there was, it was me and another guy, and uh, that was 2018, I guess, um, and I've been recording here ever since. This is basically the studio right here. So that's Phone Booth Records. So that's phone booth records. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that we're seeing right now. <laughs> I, I've been in a similar situation uh, with Troy Moore upstairs in his house. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it, it, and also, it costs, uh, a lot of people love the way you you bang bang out a tune on a guitar. I mean, you really strum the hell out of it, and uh, and I'm one of them. Um, and 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 to to quote another person who we love on the show, um, Ivan Basil does the same thing. We just love it. So uh, people dig it, man. That's uh, awesome. Uh, your favorite beer is Rolling Rock beer, am I right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> is that a is that a New York thing? I uh, no, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, because um, I actually had to hang out with Dice Clay, Andrew Dice Clay, the comedian, for a week, and and his entourage. And in his contract, he stipulates he has to have a tub with ice and Rolling Rock beer in it, and the caps are have to be already twisted, so <laughs> and put back on so he can easily get them off. That's actually in his contract. He loves Rolling Rock beer, so that brought back a memory for me when I saw that on your on your on your Facebook page. What what is your poison, Lars? Hey, before we get to that, I want to make sure that this doesn't go unnoticed. I'm sporting Julio's. BLT button. Can you? Oh, can you, hey! You Look at that. See that? Man, this guy's just sent a bunch of cool care packages to everybody, and uh, <clears throat> I got the guitar thing that you sent. You know, um, I got on my uh, <laughs> shelf there, right above uh, my "Please Kill Me" book and some Sylvain Sylvain stuff. So uh, I just kind of wanted to take a minute and and, and th put out there how much mr morales has done for kimono my house and and the blt show you know tom and i just love his amazing contributions and his spirit and his it every week every day just coming up with cool cool stuff and uh uh it's just so great to have him on board he he he, he really makes it a critical difference in what we do. This really is a, a very supportive and loving network of, of talented people. Um, it is. And again, we're very, the love is, is it's all there, man, everywhere. You can see yeah. it. Um, no doubt. Uh, before we move forward, I do want to say that we got a special video directed or, or addressed to you, Lars. Uh, in the studio. I couldn't believe it when I saw this video. Tried to get him on the show. I said, hey, you want a book for February or March? He said, no. So, <laughs> but
but I want to share this video with you. It's about one of your songs. Um, if, if Renee can, or John can pull that up for me. Hi, ho, Kermit the Frog here. Um, I just want to say that um, I watched the video of Lars Nagel uh, singing the song about going down to Sesame Street. And, uh, you know, when I first saw it, um, well, it really pissed me off. You know, I, 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 I wanted to say, hey, knock that shit off, man. So, but uh, now that I've uh, listened to it a few times, uh, well, I, I, I kind of get it now, and I get the message of it, and uh, I'm okay with it. E Just saying. So there you have it. Right here, live on this show. All these years, Rory, I just never would have expected to actually have a personal greeting from, uh, from that boy. You know what I mean? Again, you, you, you write songs that inspire people. <laughs> get, get, get the reaction. On It's Casual. On oh, there it is. On media, right? I mean, who would have thought? Is. Who would have thunk? <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> so I you, know. Were gonna, you were going to answer, what is your poison? What, what is it that, uh, that you really like the best as far as? Oh, I, I would say of all the beers, uh, probably uh, Guinness. We, oh, Okay. And, I, and I'll tell you, though, I never drank it in the States. I drank it when, when, we, when we were doing some tours. And when we did a couple of tours, uh, when we went to Europe in 2006 with my, not, not the El Caminos, but the band before. Uh, and, and, and being in Ireland, for one, I really took to, I really took to, uh, it's county by county there. You, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so Beamish is another, is an, Beamish is another, Another beer I got totally turned on to. So <clears throat> I used to think it was a heavy beer. I mean, I was I was really that literally that clueless about Guinness, and it and it's not a heavy beer. It's as light as a damn Bud Light, you know. Uh, now, yeah, now I, I, my, I drank it when I was overseas, and um, I I thought, oh, I can't do this. This is just it's like drinking burnt bread. I I can't do this. And uh, I've been told by everybody that drank it, you know, over in Europe. That, no, 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 no. You got to drink it right. You got to do it the right way at a certain temperature, and yeah. it's, and it's it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know there there are no, I mean it's not like if you go to a, you know Taco Mac or some half shitty bar here where there are all these you know there are no there there are no preservatives you know it's very clean they bring it to you every morning like they they drop it off with the milk, right? And go. we were just we it's funny fresh because, as a baby's bottom. <laughs> it's funny because the first time we went over there you know six we had gotten through customs and uh uh my other our other guitar player uh Stu, he went uh we came you come in early in the morning europe so we're maybe seven o'clock in the morning so he thought he was being sort of ahead of the game was, i'm gonna go get a grab a guinness right i'll come right back and uh he, he came back within a minute and he said there's like 75 people in line yeah. So and that, that was eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, mean, I could like that in yeah, I mean maybe six thirty, so so maybe seven fifteen, seven thirty in the morning. I mean long line to get to, to sort of get your first pint. Oh man. <laughs> the last show uh that you were on with us, um you mentioned uh, being with some famous performers. Uh you had some great moments. Little Richard was mentioned. I was name um, dropping, yeah. Yeah, producer uh, Bruce Dickinson, who wanted more cowbell. And <coughs> right. It was just so I could do that impression. Just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, but you also said that if you'd have had an iPhone at the moment that you were with Little Richard, you would have spoiled that moment. You would have completely killed that moment. Yeah. I, oh, oh, yeah, with, with, without a doubt. I mean, at, at least now. I mean, we were, and then we were 20, I don't know what we were, 30 maybe. And, uh, we were opening, actually, Atlanta Rhythm Set. We were in Florida playing. It was a festival circuit, and we were in Florida playing. And uh, we were supposed to be on the smaller stage, the, the punk rock stage. And uh, somehow in the afternoon, they 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 moved, they bumped us up to the uh, Amy Lou Harris, Lil Richard, and Atlanta Rhythm Section stage. So. Um, we had his piano on there too. It was it was crazy. So we're, nice. we just we just finished a number, and uh, actually, of all things, you know, speaking of being sick, 
I, I had had the flu that week before or the week of. So I went back to my amp. And this, I mean, we're, we, we typically don't play those big stages. And it's just a huge stage. And uh, I'm walking back to my amp and there's Lil Richard standing behind my amp smoking a joint. And he's looking at, checking us out. <laughs> he's like, just, just. What y'all looking at? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so had it been, you know. Put your phones down. Yeah, had it been recent years with a, with, with an iPhone, I would have probably just, hey. Um, <laughs> well, and, and this is a problem today. Don't you gentlemen agree that the, the whole phone thing? I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit of a, I mean, here's the thing, man. If there were cell phones at Woodstock, if, you know, if every stone person there would have taken a million pictures, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's just human nature. You, we, they just didn't have the technique. I think, I think they would have loved it at any, any. Yeah, I'm, I, and again, I'm not saying that it's a great thing all the time, but uh, what are you going to do, kids? If you have your iPhones and you see somebody drowning, don't take a video. Okay, don't do it. Just go help them. Take, take, take the plunge. Put down the phone. Go help them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and instead of sort of like. Oh, hey, check it out. Somebody's drowning. Okay, let me just post this <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> See how many hits I can get. Yeah, this is oh, a problem. Oh, look, look, Tom Cheshire clicked like on this drowning. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I got to go. I got to go save him now. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Julio, who are some of your influences? We got we know some of uh, uh, Lars's influence, but who are some of your influences down the road? Oh, man. Uh, where do I even begin? Um... Probably uh, the Beatles, um, George Harrison oh, yeah. in particular. Um, a lot of punk bands, No Effects, Social Distortion, um, New York Dolls, uh, JT, baby. all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I listen to a lot of stuff, though. I kind of listen to everything from the past hundred years. And I just kind of turn it into something that works. There you go. That's diverse. I mean, that's that's good. Do your homework. Yeah. Um, Lars, last time we also talked about James Bond uh, and our love for James Bond. Um, no time to die. Thoughts, comments, concerns. It, Rory, I, I haven't seen it. <gasps> oh, you haven't seen I haven't it. Seen it. Oh man. Me neither. I mean, to to me. Um, I like I like all those Daniel Craig, Craig films, but uh, the only thing that bothers me, there's one thing that bothers me with him, is that he's a he's a little Terminator like, Terminator like. Uh, okay. He's not he's not physically very vulnerable like like Roger Moore, or Sean, you know, uh, Connery was. I mean, he yeah he, he bolts up for the part. A, somebody swings a bazooka on his face and he just gets right back up. And like, you know, and it's sort of, I don't know, it, it, but, but overall, I really, I, I like, well, him, and, and I watched a special a couple of nights ago about it, about him being Bond. And, uh, they, they all said the producers and him, they wanted to get him to be a more physical Bond. They didn't want to rely on the gadgets all the time. Uh, though they did pull that in, uh, Inspector, they started using the gadgets in the last one. No time to die. Use some gadgets, but uh, but they wanted to be a more physical Bond. Oh yeah. yeah, I get it. I mean, you can't stay in the same vein, I suppose, all the time. And 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 also, you look at the movies that they were competing against. You know, <laughs> f fast cam. You know, fast camera movements. You know, God forbid you stay on one shot for more than two seconds. And. You know they they got to compete against the superhero movies and a lot of that stuff. And t to me, Bond was a you know it was a spy film. It was a, the strength of a good Bond movie. Always to me was the dialogue, right? Uh, and and keep that in mind for when we pick up this conversation. The minute you see that film, I want you to call me, <laughs> okay? Because I want to talk about it with you. Uh, I can't say anything now because I don't want to spoil it for you, okay? <laughs> but yeah, the minute you see it, the minute you finish, I want you to give me a call. <laughs> You've got my number. Yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I most certainly. Yeah, I know it's kind of strange. I haven't seen. You know, I don't know if you can see this, or or hang on for a second. Right behind me, can you see my Bond shelf? Uh, I see it now. Yeah. With all the uh, sweet Ian Fleming books back there, we got yeah. Yeah. Uh, job. odd job there. <laughs> 
Dude, I bought this. Uh, oh my god, that's my favorite Bond car, the the Lotus, the Lotus Esprit, uh, submarine this. car. Dig this, folks. We bought it when we were here on vacation, and uh, you know when Spy Love Me came out, we watched it on a VHS bootleg with just half trashed up, and my friend and I, we just couldn't get enough of it. <clears throat> and uh, I guess we bought this one back in uh. 78 79 maybe a couple of, i don't know maybe a year after it came out you know still it's you know still blasting away on it nice um you come down here to central florida i'm going to take you to see the real one the real one is in a museum here uh, i just went to the james the james bond exhibition museum he's got a he's got a 1500 cars it's called Deserland. michael desert the, the billionaire Rory, um, do, do they? Oh, it, it, it would it would be a gas. Do they move it around around the country? Um, there's there's a there's several. He's got one of them. Um, there's one in London in the J in the 007 exhibition in London. I saw that a couple years ago. Uh huh. Uh, but they've sold off some of their collection to him. He's the uh, one of the guys said. So and and he's got a room of Bond memorabilia like the stuff you showed me on the shelf there. It's just unbelievable. My my goodness! It's like a five million dollar collection of just Bond memorabilia. Oh, yeah. now wait a minute. Yeah. Who is this person? Uh, he's he's uh, a billionaire. His name's Michael Deser. Oh, he's a billionaire. Yeah, <laughs> and he's he's kind of like a Bond villain. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of like a Stromberg. Or, you know, oh, he's like a Stromberg. Or a yeah, Drax. <laughs> a, a, a world beneath the sea. Mr. Bond. But uh, but he has yeah he has a humongous car collection and uh, he was just going to store it here in Orlando, um, and he decided to his son helped him to decide to actually turn it into a museum and let people come see it. Man, that's so, so happening. We'll so come on down. Go. Oh, I will. I will. Oh gosh, I will. Yep. All right. Well, um, <laughs> we we we've digressed enough with the bond. Um, <laughs> Might as well continue. A, that was a little Dennis, uh, uh, David, Dave, Dave uh, Letterman laugh there. <laughs> um, when you look back uh, on on your life, uh, this is for Julio. When you look back on your life, what do you think you did right? Something uh, told me to write this question down for you this afternoon. Um, man, that's a that's a good one. Uh, I did. Um, and I, I, I guess I've written this question after a comment about Noah, your son, who's a teenager. <laughs> I figured you might say something about that. Uh, well, yeah, um, him. Him being born was the right thing for sure. Um, I was pretty young when it happened. Uh, apart from that, anything that I did right was usually for other people, I guess. Okay. I, I, rarely, I rarely ever did the right thing for myself. Well, that can start now. <laughs> now that we're aware of it. <laughs> yeah. Um... Did you have any any big bumps along the road? Oh uh, yeah, that you're willing to talk a lot about. Of them. <laughs> or yeah, um, you can just keep it general. No, I mean I I uh, I don't really keep a lot of things secret. Um, I was like a hardcore alcoholic for a long time. Uh, I had to go to rehab. I was homeless. Oh, I was jobless. Uh, <laughs> living on the streets and stuff and you know the the thing i always try to think about is i wouldn't I, I wouldn't change it for anything if i tried to change anything then that changes the road to right now and i would rather be here than anywhere else so <laughs> and, and everybody will tell you i have a t-shirt uh that i bought down in south florida that says bad decisions sometimes make better stories <laughs> oh Better song. I have a tattoo. There you go. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about the date. Okay, there you go. The date where you made prison gumbo in a chip bag. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I learned that ketchup. from a, Yeah, I learned that from a guy that was in prison. I wasn't in prison. He was. But you, you could take, like, a chip bag and just use warm water from the tap, and it'll cook all the noodles and everything. But I got in trouble for that one. Okay. <laughs> um uh you have any uh any records or recordings coming out soon 
Uh, yeah, actually, um, I have uh, I have like eight songs that I've written since I was on BLT. So like before March, I'm gonna cut all seven and release them. It's called the Sandwich Sessions. All right, can you do one for us now? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Let's see. Uh, uh, okay, this one's on there. Yoink. Uh. Okay. Um, this is the newest one I've written. You've got a record coming out too soon, right? Sometime this year, yeah. Yeah, we cool. keep getting uh, pushed back because of uh, COVID situ- various COVID situations. So it's a mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> bit of a struggle, you know. I would just we work when we can work, and then we somebody goes to dinner with somebody who knew someone who was exposed that day, and the next day session is canceled. And sometimes it's me, and sometimes it's them, right? We're all in the suit, baby. Now, you've been doing a lot with Diane Marie Call, who's watching yeah. now. Um, how's that going? Uh, it's, 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 it's nothing but fun. Uh, she has a, by the way, let's plug her brand new single called Mary Mary. And uh, it's a wonderful song. And I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to I just kind of signed up to be the co-producer with her in the studio with her making her her debut solo album and with her and danny groover and uh man this thing is coming along it's the same situation you know what i mean we we work when we <clears throat> when we can and then when it gets shut down we gotta you know it's a snail's process at this point but she yeah. but when we are working we do tend to work really fast and she uh you know it's nothing but a pleasure working with her i think you guys are gonna be uh really impressed when you hear her her new new album. I can't wait to hear it. Can't no, it's, hear it's wonderful. It. Oh yeah, absolutely. Blue, uh, blows my mind actually. Blow, yeah, you know, she's kind of like a, I don't know, you know, she's just a songbird, man. She will actually be on the show in a couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I told anybody this story, uh, but uh, I reached out to Scott Eastwood, who is Clint Eastwood's son, 
um, to come on the show. And he's and after doing my impression of his father, um, he agreed to come on the show. Uh, and Diane Marie is going to be on that show because I have a bad feeling he may not show. <laughs> And if he doesn't, I want to have a good, strong guest to cover that show, and I know Diane could do it. So, what, what's his gig, man? Uh, he's an actor, you know. He's he's acting like his father was. Um, Still is. He's done, he's done a lot of interview shows. And uh, so, anyway, I I told him if you want to come on the show, and if you want me to say something that you would like to hear your dad say to you, uh, that might be interesting. <laughs> and he, he agreed to come on the show. He said, okay. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I hope he does. And then Diane can say, hey, I was on a show with Clint, East, Clint Eastwood's son, Scott Eastwood. Yeah. Um, ask him. Maybe he can bring you uh, a little souvenir from Magnum, from the Magnum Force set. Uh, uh, you know, again, he wants to be his own actor. You know, he wants to do his own thing. So, uh, Is he uh, our again, age or is he much younger? about that. So, 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 sorry, Rory. Is he our age or is he a younger guy? He's uh, he's a little bit younger than us. He's probably in his thirties, mid thirties. Oh, we're, I mean, we're right about there anyway, so that's good. We're probably like thirty. Yeah. Because I know you're a couple years older than me. So if I'm thirty, if I'm thirty six, that will make you about thirty eight. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that. Fully is a baby. He's like twenty eight, anyways. Yeah, Julio's like Julio's like twenty four. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> uh, do you guys have any up upcoming gigs coming up in the near future? <coughs> look for you you want to start with Julio? You want to take it first? Julio, you got any gigs coming up? Uh, I mean, we got BLT tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that was something I wanted to talk to Lars about. What's going on with BLT these days? Well, we have we have loads of cool plans that we are been that we have been cooking up in Tom Cheshire's kitchen in the North Pole. <laughs> it's a small, small one bedroom apartment that him and I will get on the Santa sleigh every Friday afternoon. And we cruise up to the North Pole and we sit there and brainstorm. And occasionally we call Kim Ware or Andy Gish or occasionally we call Julio. I can see you guys doing cold miser and heat miser together. I yeah, 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 that's what we're doing. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, but so we have, um, well, first of all, Diane and I have a gig over at the, uh, a real cool place in Atlanta in a couple uh -huh. of weeks called the Red Light Cafe. And she we has actually talked about that place on the show. Pardon me? She has actually talked about the Red Light Cafe on the show before. Wonderful. Yeah, that's a cool gig. And then. Uh, that's what she the, says. And then we have, uh, well, we had a show over at the Waller's where in the spring come springtime that's where andy and kim are going to do the uh, come on to my house live festival mm -hmm. so we were scheduled to play wallers on the 20 i don't know towards the end of this month but it got pushed out and uh so we're hoping to get another date for it and then we might go see uh the makeup show and we might go see the great friendly badass cj peters <laughs> play with him at the end at the end of this month or early February, February, whenever we can find the venue. And as Julio said, on top of that, we got the, uh, uh, Jesus, God willing. Yeah. And then we got the BLT shows and, uh, oh, and speaking of the BLT shows, one thing that we're going to focus on is to Tom and I have taken it to maybe five different cities so far. And we want to continue with it. I've spoken to Vic Burgess about this uh -huh. and we're looking at hitting places like Kentucky Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia, some different places in uh, in Tennessee. And uh, <clears throat> Tom, as you know, he's moved to Nashville. Nashville. And Nashville, you, you can just get so much out of Nashville, you know. Yeah. And uh, so we are going to definitely do BLT shows in that town. So uh, we want to focus on, I'd like to focus on picking new cities and to take you know, and new perf different performers to come and meet us as we're as we're doing in different towns. So it's 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 really exciting stuff. So BLT on the move, huh? Yeah, it's on the move, and 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 again, a lot of it depends on BLT on you, the road. It depends on you know what. <laughs> well, great. 
thank you guys for both coming on and uh, gracing us with uh, with music, especially, especially you, Lars, banging one out when you don't have a voice. That's pretty amazing. Um, Julio, awesome. Just like just like I've seen before. I mean, you know, everybody thinks you're a badass. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> um, so again, we'll have to get you on again real soon. And and Lars, we always love having you on the show too. Um, so just let's say uh, good night for the first show of the year. Thank you so much for having us, Rory. Thank you so much. It's casual. Tardon Media. Yeah, man. <laughs>